I and my musical partner Louis started making music late 80s, early 90s, and our music then bore little resemblance to what we do now. But over the years, as our musical tastes and interests have developed, so has the technology that has been available to us to record our music, and our skills with instruments and the technology obviously have developed as well. So the first few years, cassette-based four-track recorder, playing real instruments mostly, very, very badly. No idea what sort of music to be making, really. Occasionally borrowing drum machines, so there was a proper groove to play to. As we went through the 80s, we had access to sequencers and we acquired some synthesizers, which was great, but I was certainly very aware that my musical skills in terms of playing real instruments wasn't up to scratch for recording and releasing. A little bit later, we got our first hard disk recording system, system called Soundscape, but he just stopped using it recently and it lived outside a computer so it could run on a very modest computer. But for the first time we were able to get things like drum loops. So there was a real drummer playing a groove that we could then either play instruments over the top of or sequence parts, synthesizer parts. During that entire period, our musical tastes developed incredibly and our interest in music from the Indian subcontinent, the Middle East, Central Asia, a little bit the Far East, totally came into our music. And in one sense, it kind of threw me back to square one. Here was this music I wanted to make with different tunings and with instruments that I didn't know how to play and couldn't get hold of. But that was the set of sounds I wanted to work with. Those were the rhythms I wanted to work with. And there is so much you can do with synthesizers and samplers to program things and, and approximate that kind of thing. So the next thing we did was finding sample CDs as they would have been originally and more recently sample sets that you download where a real musician from wherever has played a bunch of grooves or melodic phrases in particular rhythms or particular scales or modes or tuning systems. So suddenly we could bring some of that reality in in a way that we couldn't emulate ourselves. Our musicianship's just not really up to it. But probably the biggest breakthrough has been in the more recent past with the development of what's known as virtual instruments. A virtual instrument will run within a digital audio workstation, within whatever sequencer you're using on your computer. And they will have very large sample sets so that you can program amazing instrument or percussion parts or even vocal parts. But in a lot of cases, they will also have very cleverly got some phrases played by real musicians in there as well, but in such a way that you can often change the, the pitch or the tempo, you can arrange them within your tracks. So it's kind of brought two worlds together, both the computer-based programming of music, but also the human side of real humans playing real instruments with all the subtleties of, of timing and phrasing and push and pull that you find within a well-played instrument line. So for the first time, we've got everything. We've got all the programmable possibilities, lots of synthesizers, incredible amount of free ones that you can acquire from magazines or download VSTs of every kind, making every kind of sound. A lot of them are actually free. Some of the synthesizers I use the most in our recordings were actually free with a magazine. I've now got amazing options in terms of percussion, everything from across the Middle East and the Far East, lots of medieval percussion, stringed instruments. I have entire sets of Middle Eastern, Dark Age, pre-medieval and medieval instruments. So for the first time ever, I can actually realize some of the ideas that I've got. Also, the years have gone by and our musical skills have developed and improved. Louis is a very competent bass player. My guitar playing has come on, although I have little or no interest in guitar music. However, I do have various other stringed instruments now. I've got a room full of percussion instruments here, but I've gathered over the years in my travels. But because my playing skills are still not quite up to the standard that I want in our tracks, I will sometimes play parts or play individual hits on the percussion instruments and then I will program parts in the sequencer. But it's great because they're actually my own drums, my own sounds. Nobody else has exactly those sounds. But a combination of those and some of the played parts from the 
virtual instruments means suddenly I've got incredible percussion lines that are human, that have some emotion in them, but that often include my own drums. I'm increasingly playing some of my own musical instruments in the tracks as well as all the program stuff. And if I do a track where I can't tell what I played and, and what was programmed, then I'm happy. In the old days, in the classic days of rock music, everybody recorded the same way. You went into a studio, you set up live, you played with microphones that went onto whatever kind of tape you were using. It got mixed, there was your track. In the modern day, last 20 years or whatever, we've now reached a point where probably no two artists actually record the same way or use the same equipment or have the same methodologies. It's a totally new world and there are many new ways of doing things. The fact that everybody has powerful computers and the internet and that you can get synthesizers and digital audio workstations free online means that music is now immensely democratic. Anybody can get out there and make tunes. The downside of that is there is an awful lot of crap out there. I think Spotify now gets something like heading for 70,000 new tracks a day. Very hard to compete with if you're trying to be heard above this massive crapola. However, the good side is that if you've got ideas and some creativity, you now can make music in a way that when I was first starting out 40 years ago or whatever, you couldn't. In those days, the only way to make music was to get a record deal, which was impossible then and pointless now. It's a different world now. Things are, in one sense, much, much better. But paradoxically, you're up against a lot more opposition when it comes to trying to get heard 